Welcome to our first video on algebra, and here we're solving simple equations. Now, here in this equation, what we see is it says 5x equals 10. What does that mean? Well, 5x means 5 times x, and 5, we call it a coefficient, because it's right next to, well, it's a number that's next to and being multiplied by our variable. And letters, lowercase letters, usually represent variables, right? Now variables, they can represent a single number, they can represent more than one number, they can represent a lot of different things. In these equations, we're gonna look at how do you deal with variables that equal a specific number. So here we have five x equals 10. And that again, that means 5 times x is 10. In other words, 5 times some mystery number. Now I'm going to use a dot for times. I don't want to confuse it with x. All right, 5 times some mystery number is 10. That's our variable x. So what, what number goes in there? And you know, with this equation, you can probably see it right away. 5 times 2 is 10. And that means that in this equation, right, x equals 2, and that's our answer. But I'm showing, I want to show you how to work through this equation so that when you get to tougher equations, you have a strategy that will work for you. What do we do? Well, if you have 5x equals 10, to figure out this missing number is, we don't need to guess, right? We can calculate it by using what's called the inverse operation. So if we're multiplying here, right, 5 times something is 10, we could solve for that missing something by going backwards. We could divide. That's the key here. So if it's 5 times something is 10, we can work backwards by using the inverse operation. 10 divided by 5 will give you x. And in this case, 10 divided by 5, well, that's 2. So x equals 2. And that's, that's a strategy that, that we can really carry with us, right? So if you're multiplying, you can solve for x by dividing. And, and we'll look at some other examples later on where if you're dividing, you can solve by multiplying. If you're adding, you can solve by subtracting. And if you're subtracting, you probably guessed it, you could solve by addition. But let's look a little bit closer at this example. Now, when you have 5x equals 10, what does this mean? Well, it means, imagine you have, I don't know, like five boxes of something, right? This is an X, and this is another X. It's the same size box. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, all of this we're saying is equal to 10. 10 something, I don't know, right? Maybe, maybe 10 triangles. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, we don't know what's in these boxes exactly, but we're trying to figure it out, right? There's five mysterious x's. That's what 5x means, right? It means five groups of x. So here they are. If we know that five boxes, whatever is in them, equals these 10 triangles, we could figure out what's in each box. We divide both sides by 5. And that's really what we're doing here. Now we're just showing it in a different way. You divide both sides by 5, and you'll get more familiar with this. We're dividing by 5 on both sides of our equation. Here's one side. Here's the other to keep things balanced. So what's 10 divided by 5? Well, that's just 2. And what's 5 times something divided by 5? Well, that's just, well, that's something. In other words, if we had something like, I don't know, 5 times 3, and then divided it by 5, because this line means divide, right? 5 times 3 is 15, divided by 5 is 3. So we took 5 times something, divided by 5, and just ended up with this original something. Right? Multiplying and dividing by 5 cancels out. So on this side of the equation, we just have x. So you can see that x equals 2, and this is typically right here, the strategy you would need 
for almost any difficult problem where you're multiplying to solve for x, just divide. But, of course, it has a connection to this picture. If we divide this side by 5, right, we have 10 things, we divide them in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equal groups. And then if we divide this side into 5 groups, right, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can see that each x has two triangles, right? And that's really what we're showing here when we divide both sides by 5. So let's, let's backtrack. Here, with the equation of 5 times something is 10, we can solve by using inverse operations. So we could divide 10 by 5 to get x, and that's what we did right here, and that works. Now, over here, this is another way of showing the same idea, but this is a little bit more powerful because by dividing both sides by five, you put yourself in a routine and a habit that helps you for much tougher equations. Um, so we divide both sides by five, and we got x equals two. Here, this is a picture of what's happening, right? Five x's equals 10 things. Divide both sides by five, and you can see that each missing x, or each unknown x, equals two triangles. Let's look at another example. I think that'll clear things up. So what if we say 2x equals 8? What does this mean? This means 2 times something is 8. So a quick way of solving this is to say, well, first of all, 8 divided by 2 is x. And 8 divided by 2 is 4, so 4 is x. And we're done. But there's other ways of solving it. Here, I could write 2x equals 8. So now, another way of thinking about it is to say, let's divide both sides by 2. Let's keep everything balanced. 2x divided by 2, well, like we said before, that's just x. And 8 divided by 2, well, that's just 4. So x is 4. Get the same thing. But, of course, we could draw a picture for this to make sense of what's happening. So here we have two x's. So x and x. And we're adding them, right? equals, which is 2x's, 8 something. Let's draw 8 circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here, when we divide both sides by 2, we divide the x's in two groups, and we divide these circles in two groups, right? And you can see that each x equals 4, well, whatever. We don't really know what's in there. But by dividing both sides by 2, we set that up. Let's try another one. Sometimes uh, it's not, you know, it's not always going to be that easy, of course. Or the same principles always apply. But perhaps you have something like, like 3x plus 4x equals 14. So now this seems, you know, this seems a little bit more confusing. But first we should simplify, and that's the, the key word that will come up so often in They'll even ask you many times, simplify this equation. They're not even going to ask you to solve it, but just combine like terms. And a term is just, well, a coefficient and a variable, or a coefficient and several variables that are being multiplied. So when you're simplifying, you're combining terms that have the same variables. They can have different coefficients, and you'll see why in a moment. But the variables have to be the same. So here, 3 times x that, that, all that means is you have three x's. One, two, three. Four x's, well now we're adding four more x's. Two, three, four. So altogether you can see, well that's just seven x's. So notice when you're adding like terms, if the coefficients are different, but the variables are same, you can just add the coefficients, in this case three and four, which is seven, and leave the variables intact. So 3x and 4x is 7x, and that equals 14. And now we've got a problem like before. We go over here. 7x equals 14. Well, let's divide both sides by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 7x divided by 7 is just x. So x is going to equal 2. But of course, there's a picture for this. So these seven x's equal 14, I don't know, something, maybe stars. One, two, three, four, and 
of course this these stars we should imagine they're all exactly equal that's 10 12 14 right 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 so when we divide both sides by 7 effectively what we're doing is we're saying divide these in seven groups on this side and of course we do it to both sides and you know equations are really about balance keeping everything balanced so we also divide this side into seven groups and once you do that once you divide both sides by seven you can see that each x has two stars or two whatever and that's you know, this is the basic idea in algebra now the next video we'll look at some some tougher examples but again focus on this idea that when we multiply something by x to find out what it is we can divide and when we add we can subtract and you'll see a whole bunch of examples so I, I hope these really start to to help but this is just the beginning we're going to go so far with this it's going to be fun